So Tulip is, uh, I guess before I jump into Tulip, let me give, explain a little bit about the background for Tulip. Um, before, personally, before I started at Tulip, I had never stepped foot on a factory floor. I thought manufacturing was all robots and high-speed assembly lines. And that couldn't have been further from the truth. Uh, manufacturing tools, specifically those for people on the assembly line and people working in the factory, are ancient. They're still stuck in the 80s and 90s. There's like desktop Windows applications. There's just really no good uh, software to help those people work. Um, and part of the difficulty there is just the breadth of the problem, right? What you need to build a jet engine is entirely different from what you need to build a shoe or a pharmaceutical device or anything. Um, so Tulip's mission is to empower the manufacturing engineer on the shop floor to be able to let them write their own software, custom fit to whatever use case they need. So what does that look like? It means a no-code application editor where you can go in and design and build your own applications without having to code. It means a hardware stack. We build our own hardware and write our own embedded software for it that can talk to a variety of different devices, all sorts of the common industrial protocols to be able to transmit that data back up to the, the server. And finally, an analytics engine where you can understand what the people and the machines on the shop floor are doing to help uh, get a sense of in real time, how am I doing today on my factory? Um, Tulip uh, is uh, more about five years old now. Uh, sorry, almost six years old now. Uh, we're just under a hundred people, uh, both based in uh, based in Somerville, but also with offices in London and Munich and a couple of other people scattered around the U.S. Uh, the engineering team is about 35, 40 of that right now, uh, and the engineering team really reflects the breadth of um, the product we're trying to work on. Right. So the engineering team has people who are electrical engineers and computer vision engineers and front end experts and people, you know, data engineers are working on our pipeline, right? Uh, there's such a breadth of projects to work on at Tulip that it's not like we're a team of 35 people that's been polishing the same focused experience for, for the past six years, right? We're still building out massive new areas of the product that we know are going to be important and we know we're going to make a huge difference to our customers, um, but we haven't even gotten time to start yet. We have a ton of fascinating technical problems throughout the code base. Uh, everything from how do we as a startup design and build and manufacture our own hardware up to how do we, on, on the front end, how do you help an engineer who's manufacturing engineer who maybe took a basic Python course but isn't a software engineer, how do you help them write their own software? How do you help them design inter interfaces, write their own logic, debug those interfaces in a way that is maybe natural to you as a software engineer, but not natural to someone with a manufacturing background. Um, on the front end, we're using React and Redux. On the back end, uh, we're moving everything towards Go-based microservices. Uh, on the hardware side, we're using Yocto to build a, a, a Linux variant uh, for our device, and then a combination of Rust and uh, Elixir to handle the software side on the hardware. Um, you know, just to talk about one, one recent challenge we're working on. Um, our, our customers need a way to, to write custom logic, right? So, hey, when I press this button, I want to do this thing. Or every five seconds, check this condition and do that. Or when this barcode is scanned, I want this thing to happen. Now, we want this logic to run on all areas of the platform. We want it to run locally at the edge. So when someone presses a button, something can happen immediately. They don't have to wait for a round trip to the server. We want it to execute on the server side so that we can run hey, whenever a new user signs up, if blah, 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 we want to send them an email. And we want it to run on our edge devices, right? And we want to be able to take high frequency events from the edge, like a analog voltage, for example, analyze it really quickly, and then emit an event uh, as necessary. Uh, these runtimes are really different. And specifically, the first one is in JavaScript, right? It's in the browser. And so we're sort of, you know, that, that ties your hands a little bit in sort of how you can try to make one unified runtime across all of these. Uh, one big project we're working on right now is actually taking advantage of WebAssembly. We feel like this is sort of the perfect technology here to be able to write one piece of logic that can run across all of these different platforms. Um, so building our own stack to be able to handle how do I run write logic once that I can then run anywhere on all of these different platforms and really unify the whole experience end to end. Um, that's one of the you know that's why we build our own hardware, right? We want to have a unified experience. We want to have that. Apple experience of the, the software works perfectly with the hardware. They're designed in tandem. Uh, and you can get a really high quality experience by using those two together. 
So for our hiring process, we focus on the practical. Uh, we're not a fan of algorithms questions. We're not going to ask you the big O notation of something. Uh, we're not going to give you a, a trivia question that you could have just Googled. Um, in fact, for almost all of our interview questions, you can choose whatever language you want to run in. You can use Google during the during the process to search up your thing, right? You know, you're, you're not to be expected to, to turn off Google when you join Tool, right? It'd be kind of silly to expect you to not be able to use it during the interview process as well. Um, so you can sort of expect, uh, you know, a couple couple questions on, hey, here is some open-ended thing. We want you to go implement something. Or here's a piece of code that has a couple of bugs in it. Let's go fix them. Uh, questions that try as much as possible in the artificial context of an interview to mimic what you're going to be doing in your job. The culture sort of is a product of the ambition that we're trying to take on, right? We're, we're focusing on such a broad product. There are entire companies that are thinking of verticals of one thing we're working on. As a result, uh, everything's just so broad that no one person needs, like maybe even if someone wanted to, it'd be impossible to micromanage. We need people who can you know, take initiative. They're gonna have the trust of everybody else to go and execute on something and have that autonomy to be able to make the decision and defend it and, and push for the thing they think is right. So for an engineer, this is gonna look like you know, your, your manager's not going to be telling you, like, you need to do X and Y and Z, and here's how you're going to break it down and do this, this, this. You're going to be in charge of figuring out, how should I approach this? How should I try to incorporate, what technical debt should I try to fix as I'm taking on this feature? What technical debt do we need to work on that's outside of this feature? What's the trade-off we make there, right? I'm going to advocate for, we need to improve X, Y, Z, because it's going to help us in this area. Um, and you're going to be working really closely with the product team to help understand what it is you're building and how that reflects into the into the product. Um, you know, an engineer needs to to know their problem domain to really be most productive. Um, manufacturing is hard because most people don't know manufacturing. So we're going to try to help you get up to speed. Go visit our con in non-COVID times. Go visit customers. Be on customer calls. Build tool of apps. Help make sure every engineer has that sense of what it is they're building, so they can take that back. To their Tulip's at an inflection point right now. On one hand, we have a ton of customers. We're, we're 100, cust 100 paying customers. Uh, we're deployed in, I think it's 23 or 24 different countries around the world. Um, so we have momentum, we have a base. We've proven this is something useful, right? It's not like that demand's gonna disappear, right? There's always gonna be a need for something like Tulip. So we've proven the demand and now it's time to start scaling, right? Um, there's, I think, around 300 million people around the world working in industrial operations, so manufacturing, warehousing, things like that, laboratories. Um, and I mean, that's just a, such a massive segment, right? For Tool to really be able to address all of the problems in that area, we're going to need to be a company of thousands of people. And that's going to take five or 10 years, right? Um, but we're at this point where we know we have the market fit and it's time to start scaling. So in relation to where we're going to be, it's absolutely still the ground floor, right? It's still coming in and building huge new greenfield projects that are going to redefine what tool can do and the value our customers can get from us and set the course for what we're going to do technically over the next five to 10 years. Um, so it's sort of now is the right time. We, you know, we have the market, we have the opportunity. It's time to start executing.